So, you play WoW Vanilla. You reach level 60, and you play a Druid. And you want to go balance. But your gear is kind of like this. Yeah, I know. Don't worry though, we're going to fix that. Welcome to the epic Gearing Up Your Balance Druid, Episode 1, Getting Started. What's up guys, Hamsterville Gaming here with a new video, and yes, we are going to gear up a Balance Druid in WoW Vanilla. Um, this is going to be Episode 1, Getting Started. Basically, this is for the guys that just dinged level 60, and they're just trying to get some their hands some decent intellect and maybe some spell damage gear. Um, there's a few things I'd like to get out of the way though before I get started. Um, first of all, what I would normally do is give you a list um, of the items that I recommend and then show you them in WoW well Model Viewer and at the end I show you, well, you got this amount of stamina and this amount of spell damage. But this time around I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm actually going to get all the gear in-game, so that way it's much easier for me to explain where you can get this gear, how, are, how hard it is to get this gear, how much it costs in the auction house, should you have to buy it there. And it's also fun because at the end, I will have, I will hopefully have all the gear that I will recommend. So I can, and that way I can actually show you guys how much damage you can do with that kind of gear, which is kind of fun. Um, second of all, I will be farming the gear um, as a feral druid because farming uh, mats or mobs in a balanced spec without any gear whatsoever is really boring and it's really slow. It is really, really slow. And I noticed that uh, farming with a feral spec with some you know, normal crappy gear just goes a lot faster and a lot easier. So for the, for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna farm as a feral druid, just letting you know. And third of all, um, you have to take into consideration that um, the gear I rec will recommend will cost you some money. I mean, I, I've, I've explained this in my gearing up your clothy video that the nature of vanilla is that gear is um, a lot more scarce. I mean, there's a lot less uh, quests that will give you spell damage items, for instance, in, compared to like the Burning Crusade. And items with spell damage usually cost a lot more on the auction house. So. If you're gonna follow this guide, then be prepared to have some gold um, in your bag. Because, yeah, some items will cost you some money. So, it's gonna be a long one. It's gonna be a long video, but it's gonna be pretty cool and pretty fun for me. So without further ado, let's start off with the headpiece. Alright, we are here in Tenaris at Gadget San. Um, there's two reasons why I'm here. First of all, we are going to farm some mats for the headpiece. And the headpiece is going to be the Dreamweave Circlets. Um, I've also used this one in my Gearing Up Your Clothy video because it's really good. It has a fair bit of intellect, fair bit of spirit, and most importantly, 21 spell damage. <coughs> However, the mats are kind of expensive for a uh, recently dinged level 60 druid. Um, so... You know what, first of all, I'm going to just uh, say what the mats are. So the mats are 40 Mage Weave Cloth, 4 Wild Vine, 2 Heart of the Wild, 3 Heavy Silken Thread, 1 True Silver Bar, and 1 Jade. Now, unfortunately, I don't have, um, I do not have Herbalism on this character, so I cannot get the Wild Vine and Heart of the Wild through just gathering herbs. I'll have to resort to buying that from the auction house, as well as the true silver bar and the jade so those four items i have to resort to the auction house however the mage weave cloth is pretty easy to farm and that's the reason why we're here in tenaris that's at least it's reason number one because over here and let me just uh, grab the map real quick yeah so over here and over here at these little rune icons and i think this one as well and um, there are ogres and these ogres are a good place to farm mage with cloth. Now we're gonna need 40 of them, so we're gonna have to spend some time getting them. But here is where we're gonna hit two birds with one stone. Because not only can we farm the ogres for mage with cloth for the headpiece, there's also a quest in Gadget Sand to get a pretty decent shoulder item, which also involves killing those ogres. So 
not only gonna farm some matrix cloth from these ogres, but we're also gonna do a quest. Where to get that quest? Well, it should be right here at Andy Lin. This little gnome right here. Yes, the Dumal compound. She's gonna give us this quest. And this quest will give us the Rug Boot Mantle. That's also gonna be one of our items from our list. So it has 6 stamina, 11 intellect, and 4 spirit. Not too bad, but more importantly, it's also leather. So you're not gonna look like a mage um, all the way. So I'm gonna accept that. And uh, all there's left to do now is to kill some ogres. Okay, so right now we're at one of the ogre places. I'm gonna show you the map. I'm right here. This is the place where you can kill the ogres for the quest. And you also need to kill Gore Marok the Ravager. And he's right here, so let's just kill him right now. And uh, who knows, he might drop some Mage Weave. And damn. 11.32 Ferocious Bite. Not bad. And as you can see, these guys are like level 48 to 49. So if you're level 60, it's pretty much a breeze. And as you can see, he also dropped some Mage Weave. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Just uh, accept the quests in Gadget Sand. Then uh, kill these dudes until you uh, completed the quest. And then keep on going until you have... Uh, 40 mage weave cloth. So, there's nothing left to do now but farm. Alright, we're back in Gadget Sand. I completed the quest, as you can see, and I got two stacks of mage weave cloth, like right here. Um, all in all, uh, completing the quest with grinding the mage weave took me about 15 minutes. So, very easy and very casual quest, even for someone with crap gear. So, let's go off and hand that in. And there we go. And we got one gold, 17 silver as well. I'm gonna put that there. And that is the first item we can check off our lists. Now, we uh, just got the Mage Weave, so we, so we still have the Wild Vine, Heart of the Wild, Heavy Silken Thread, True Silver Bar, and Jade left. So, without further ado, let's go to the Auction House and hope the prices are gonna be somewhat forgivable. So here we go. Now, as you can see, I'm on my hunter right now because I wanted to go to the auction house um, to check out the wild vine, but unfortunately there was only one piece there. Yeah. So I hopped on my hunter, which does have herbalism. So I can uh, basically farm the uh, the wild vine myself. For people that, are, uh, that want to know, it's basically um, the wild vine drops from purple lotus. So basically you're looking for purple lotus. And they drop, there we go, wild vine. And if I'm looking, where's the wild vine? Ooh, I actually got a full stack here, that's really nice. Bam. But uh, as you can see, two wild vine, and I got two wild vine earlier, so that's... So that's four wild vine, which is the exact um, amount of wild vine we need for the dream we've circled. So, there you go. Um, by the way, one, one more thing to add. There was one wild vine on the auction house, and it was about three gold, so... I think on average four pieces of wild vine would set you back about 10 gold, so it's not too expensive, but uh, I'm just glad I was able to do this with my, with my hunter, so let's move on to the next item. Alright guys, I'm back at the auction house again, and I'm going to look for some Heart of the Wild. Now luckily I had some Heart of the Wild on my hunter, so I traded that to my druid, so I already got it. However. I'm just going to show you guys how much it costs. It's actually quite expensive. Uh, if you look here, 2 for 8 gold. Now, for the Dreamweave Circlet, you only need 2, so that's 8 gold, which is still fairly cheap. But if you had to have, if you had to buy a few full stack, it would probably set you back like 70 to 80 gold. So, they are quite expensive, but still, just 8 gold. Alright, so, as I said, I already got them. So the only things we are missing now is a true silver bar, um, a jade, and three heavy, heavy silver threads. So let's check out the true silver bar. Oh, nice, that's really cheap. One gold, ten silver. There we go. And one jade. Ooh, that's five gold. Oh well, screw it. Okay, so we got those. And all we need now is some heavy silken thread. And we will have all the mats for our headpiece. Okay, just one more item to go, and that is that are the heavy silken threads. So I'm gonna need three of those. One, two, three. 
And that's it. That's we, that's all the items we need. So we're gonna trade this mage right here. It's actually my mage because all we need now is a crafter. Now my mage, fortunately, can craft this. In fact, in fact, every pretty much every mage can craft this um, certain uh, item. So you won't have any trouble finding one that can craft it. So let me just check the. And there we go. And then oh yeah, the mage we've clocked. So we have to trade again. There we go. Trade a second time and one more stack, and that should be it. I'm gonna check on my mage real quick if the if those are the actual. Mhm. Mm yes. Okay. So here we go, crafting the stuff. Okay, it's done. I just crafted the item, so there's nothing left to do but trade the item to my druid, and there we go. Another item we can add to our checklist, so there we go. Dreamweave Circle, 21 spell damage, that's really nice, that'll definitely help me in doing more damage. So, let's move on to the necklace. We're here at Gromgol base camp in Stranglethorn Vale, that's where we need to go to get the first quest of a quest chain where we'll get a necklace for our balancer hood. Um, this is horde only, unfortunately. So if you're alliance, then I'm sorry. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to talk to this dude right here, Farseer Mokthardin. He's gonna give us a quest called Mokthardin's Enchantment, or Enchantment, whatever you pronounce it. And um, there's a few quests you gotta do. First quest will involve you killing some panthers and a tigers, then the next quest will involve you killing jungle stalkers, then the third one is getting an aged gorilla sinu, which is one of those quests in wild vanilla that had an extremely low drop rate, but unfortunately here on the phoenix server it's pretty much almost 100% drop rate, so it's pretty easy. And then we will have to kill some nagas and get another quest item and that will give us a necklace but first I'm gonna do these three quests and I'm gonna show you the last one which will basically give us the necklace so without further ado let's start questing okay we're on the fourth uh, part of the Mokthardens enchantment quest chain as you can see I'm making my way up this island uh, you need to be right here on this island right here and you're gonna make your way all the way up you can kill some nagas but eventually you'll have to go in here, this little entrance right there. And right there is going to be the water, the holy spring water that you need to get. So um, I can just stealth past these mobs so we'll kill them later. First we're going to grab the item. Um, it's right here. Make sure there's no one around. That's good, okay. Just cross the bridge. And as you can see the little wrench tool. There we go, we're gonna open it. And that's the holy spring water. And all that's left to do now is kill 10 nagas. And once we got that, we'll return to the quest giver and we'll have our necklace. So, without further ado, let's kill some nagas. Okay, we're back at Grongol base camp and we got the quest completed. So let's hand it in and get our necklace. There you go, that's a necklace. Choker of the High Shaman, 5 Intellect, 8 Spirit. Nothing too fancy, but as of right now, that's pretty much all we can get. So I'm going to complete that. And that's yet another item we can check off our gear list. So, I think it's time for the cloak. Yep, let's do the cloak. Right, for the cloak, we're going to have to go to Reven Tusk Village in the Hinterlands, which is... Right here. So there's the hinterlands, and this is where Reven Tusk Village is. Now here, um, you're gonna accept this quest right here at the uh, wanted board or the call to arms board, and we need this quest right here: um, wanted vile priestess hex and her minions, because that quest will give us either the necklace, which is pretty nice for melee. And the Deep Woodlands Cloak, 6 stamina, 9 intellect, 12 spell damage. This is actually considered to be um, best in slot, pre-rate best in slot as far as I know for a caster, so I'm going to accept that. And those quests are at Jintha Alor, 
which is, let me just show unexplored areas, right there. Now, while you're um, doing this uh, Vow Priestess Hexes quest, you can also accept some other quests and do them while you're doing these. So I advise you to also do this one, Job Opening Guard Captain of Reaving Tusk Village, which will uh, require you to kill a bunch of elites there. And um, this one will actually give you a nice trinket, should you ever want it to go feral or tank or whatever. That's uh, kind of cool. And there's a few other quests. Now, these are uh, the mobs are level 50 elites. So you're going to have to either... Uh, you need at least one more guy to do this. But if you do it at level 60, with another 60, it's going to be pretty much a breeze. I mean, I've already found someone who else who wanted to do these. Um, he's an Earth Might Orc Shaman. And... Um, yeah, with just with two guys, it's going to be a walk in the park. So it's not too hard. It will take you some time. But then again, it will give you a blue cloak with spell damage. So it's a really nice addition to our um, balanced druid gear. So I'm just going to wait for the shaman to be here. And then I'm going to kick some ass in Jinthalore. So let's do this. Alright, so the shaman had to go to work. Which is unfortunate. So I just logged on my mage and I'm just going to solo it myself. So uh, here we go. This mob is kind of tricky, so I'm gonna pop all my cooldowns and hope I can burst this vile priestess down pretty fast. He does heal, so I'm gonna have to see. There we go. Counterspell that, and then do it like that, and hopefully I can like so. Yes, there we go. She's done. As long as she doesn't heal herself. Yep, there we go. Now, I did actually manage to solo these Vile Branch Amanzashi Zassi guards. Um, if you watched my Stupid Druid Tricks video, you can see that it doesn't matter what spec or what gear you have, you can pretty much solo anything um, that has melee attacks and is able to, uh, to be rooted. So you just basically root one of those guards and just occasionally cast Starfire, keep up your mana, and you'll be able to kill them. So... Um, it, it's not a fast killing process, but it definitely works. So I managed to kill the 10 guards on my druid, and I just used my mage to kill the priestess. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's all we need to do. So let's head back to Reven Tusk Village and get our cloak. We're back at Reven Tusk Village, and now all there's left to do is head up here into the inn and then head up the staircase. And there you go, let's hand in the cat, let's hand in the quest. So first we're gonna open, we're gonna uh, complete this one here for the trinkets. But more importantly, we're gonna complete this one and get the Deep Woodlands Cloak. There we go. So that's yet another item we can add. We can uh, check off our balanced gearing list. So we're starting to get somewhere. And without further ado, let's start on getting that chest piece. Okay, I'm back on my mage again. And for a good reason, because for the chest, we're gonna get the dream weave vest and it's almost exactly the same as the dream weave circlet in terms of stats and also in terms of mats now remember i traded a full stack of wild find to my <coughs> to my mage and a few other stuff so i already got the mats but i'm just going to show you anyway in case you have to go back and uh, get some extra stuff so it's six bolt of mage weave that's 30 mage weave cloth six wild vine Two Heart of the Wild and two Heavy Silk and Thread. Now, luckily, unlike the Dreamweave Circlet, you do, you do not need a true Silver Bar or a Jade. So it's just uh, these four items, and uh, that's it. So um, all there's left to do now is craft this, and I can give it to my Druid, and we've completed the chest piece as well. Okay, I've just got done uh, crafting the Dreamweave Vest, so all there's left to do is straight that to my druid thank you very much and there we go the dream we vest 9 intellect 14 spirit and 18 spell damage so that's yet another item we can check off our list and let's see yes it's time to do the bracers so here we go okay now for the bracers we're gonna have to resort to the auction house again because first of all we are going to buy the wild heart bracers so let's just see bracers they're usually around 20 to 25 gold so i'm hoping yeah 25 gold so it's a little bit more expensive than usual but i'll take the extra gold it's still um 
it's still average in terms of price so 25 gold for that <coughs> um, keep in mind that if you are uh, using vote points from the uh, uh, from the website you can also buy the bracers for 10 vote points so you can either get it through the auction house or get it from 10 vote points so there you go wild heart bracers now that's not the whole story because as you can see they have 7 strength and 15 intellect so they're not really that great for a balanced druid but don't worry we're gonna fix that because we're gonna change these to feral heart bracers that's right we're gonna get the tier 0 0.5 bracers and um, in order to do that we need to go to thrall's chamber so let's head there right now all right, and once you're in Thrall's chamber, which is right here, Grommash Hold, there's Thrall. You're gonna have to take left, and you're gonna talk to this dude right here, Mokvar. And Mokvar has a quest for us called an Earnest Proposition, and what he wants is uh, the Wild Heart Brazers, obviously, 15 Silithus Venom samples and 20 gold, and for that he will turn it in. He will turn our common wild heart bracers into feral heart bracers and as you can see they have six strength and six agility which is not really that relevant but more importantly six stamina 12 intellect five spirit and a little bit of spell damage so it's a nice and easy upgrade now in order to get those silithus venom samples we have to go to silithus makes perfect sense so let's fly there, collect 15 samples, and then once we got those, we can go back to Orgrimmar, hand them in, and we'll have our Feral Heart Bracers. Alright, we're here in Silithus, which I like to call Gangfest 2015. Um, and we need to kill either the Stone Lash Scorpids or Sand Skitterers, and they're basically around here, in this general area, and here. Now, I prefer to kill them around here because this is where most of the players are at gathering scenario reps so if you're um, gathering the items around here you have less chance of getting ganked and basically the drop chance is around 70 to 80 percent so this will be really quick and you just have to kill them and that's pretty much it there's not much to it so um, yeah let's uh, try to get 15 of these without getting killed that would be pretty nice Oh, by the way, I just had to put this uh, in the video. This is what happens when you drink Nogger Fogger Elixir and you grind as a Feral Druid. Yeah, you actually look like a rogue. And more importantly, the attack animation is pretty much hilarious. See, I'm attacking as a Feral Druid, but I'm hitting him with my stick even though I'm clawing him with my claws. Yeah. <laughs> awesome vanilla stuff. So yeah, that's that's what I wanted to show you guys, and, I'll, and I and I can also show you the uh, the really good drop rate in there. Um, I've killed nine scorpions so far, and I got nine silithus venom samples. So the drop rate is really good. I think it might even be 100%. So just a few more minutes, and I'll be done with this, and I'll be back in Orgrimmar. And we're back in Gromash Hole at Thrall. Now we got the silithus venom samples. We got the, how, the Wild Heart Bracers, and we got 20 gold. So now this guy is going to give me the Feral Heart Bracers. There we go. As you can see, really nice for a just dinked level 60 Balanced Druid. So yet another item we can check off of our gear list. And now, it's time for the weapon. Okay, it's time for the weapon. And for this gearing up video, I decided to go with a main hand and an off hand. The main hand is going to be a dagger, and for that dagger we're going to have to go once again to Silithus again. I'm going to go to this Wanted poster, and we're going to go to Wanted Death Clasp Terror of the Sands. And he will give us this dagger, which is 3 intellect and 4 mana every 5 seconds. Which doesn't sound like a whole lot, and well to be honest it really isn't. But we're going to combine this with an offhand, and with those two items combined it's going to be a pretty decent choice. So without further ado, we need to kill Death Clasp. Uh, it's an elite scorp scorpion, and he is surrounded by two adds. And uh, let me just show you on the map where he is. He is right here at the Bronze Beard Encampment. Now, if you've watched my stupid uh, stupid druid tricks, uh, you can see that you're actually able to solo Death Clasp on a uh, Death Clasp on your own. And I'm going to show you right now. So here we go. 
All right, we're here at Death Clasp. As you can see right there, there he is. And he has two ads. And as you can see, he's right there. So, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to sleep Death Clasp. And have to root one of these ads. And then the second ad will run to me. I will kill that. Then I will re sleep Death Clasp. Then I will start killing the other ad. And after that, I will just slowly start killing Death Clasp. So here we go. So sleep that. Oh, wait. Hey. Handy buck. So I didn't pull the ads. That's pretty cool. So what if I cast Star Starfire? Does that mean I only pull Death Clasp? Ooh. Okay, so I'm noticing I got really lucky here. Really, really lucky. So all I have to do now is just slowly kill Death Clasp. And uh, now normally what you would do, I don't know if this is uh, something new from the Phoenix server, but uh, normally you would uh, sleep Death Clasp and root the first ad and the second ad, you'll just kill that. Then you will um, re-sleep Death Clasp and then we just um, kill the, sec the second ad the way I do it right now. And once that and once that's death, dead, you will uh, root Death Clasp and you'll slowly start killing him by using Starfire the way I'm, do I'm doing it right now. So as you can see, it's very easy. Just keep roots up and uh, keep an eye out on your mana. Now, as you can see, I'm doing this as, uh, as Feral Specs, so if you would do this as Balance, you would be able to kill him a little bit faster. But um, it doesn't matter. I mean, even with Feral, see, there we go. Gets out of root. That's okay, reroot. Even as Feral, it's pretty easy. It just takes a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna wait and relax and uh, wait until my Innervate is uh, done so I can get a bit of mana. And as you can see, he's almost, uh, he's almost dead. Do I have a mana potion? Nope, I don't. That's okay though, I can kill him. So as long as he doesn't resist my roots twice or anything and he hits me for 2k, things are gonna be just fine, so. There we go, now I'm gonna run around him. Because I don't want him to reset. So I'll just run back. I'm gonna keep nature's grasp on me, by the way, for a uh, for, uh, in case of an emergency situation. So just keep on killing him. Yeah, he's almost dead. Oh, see there's a resist. So he's almost dead, but just to be sure, I'm just gonna wait until I have a little bit more mana. I'm gonna reroute him right now. There we go. Pull back a bit, be sure not to aggro those adds. Okay, I think I kill him with one Star of Fire and one Moonfire. Ooh, another resist. So, as you can see, this can happen. So that's why you have to uh, always keep an eye on your mana. So it's okay. We'll kill him uh, sooner or later. Just keep him rooted. And as you can see, he is getting some damage from the roots as well. So slowly but surely, he is going down. So reroot. No, that's okay. Reroot. Now I'm hoping. He will not resist this one. There we go. A little bit messy at the end. When he came out of roots, I wanted to go and uh, reuse Nature's Crest, but it was on cooldown. So, regardless, we got him. So that's Death Clasp's Pincer. All that's left now is to return to Sonarin Hold and get the dagger, and then we'll get our offhand. Now, once you completed the quest, you're gonna have to go up this little uh, path right here. And then go up the tower all the way up. We'll meet someone there. We can hand in the quest. And we'll have our main hand. I'm just gonna rebuff. There we go. It's pretty easy actually. I thought the mobs would uh, also aggro, but apparently if you hibernate him, the, the ads won't aggro. So that's a neat little trick. I don't know if it uh, works every time, but regardless. And there you go, the black crystal dagger. And uh, <laughs> I still need to train dagger skill, but it's okay. We'll pick that up later. So that's our main hand complete. So let's get the off hand. Okay, now for the off hand, we're gonna get something from the auction house. Um, we just got the dagger, and we are gonna combine that with this one right here. We're gonna go to miscellaneous. I'll held an off hand, 
And yep, there it is. The glowing black orb. And as you can see, 10 intellect and 12 spell damage. Now combined with that dagger, it's going to be pretty sweet. So it's 17 gold. So it is um, a little expensive. But again, that's the nature of vanilla. Um, stuff with spell damage on the auction house is always expensive. So 17 gold for that one. And there we go. I'm going to get it from the mail. And that's pretty much all you have to do for your offhand. So that is very convenient that you don't have to do a long quest chain or anything. And it gives you 12 spell damage. I mean, that's not too bad. So there you go. So that's another item that we can check off our list. All right, time for the trinkets. And the trinkets is going to be pretty short because there aren't any that you can get through questing or auction house that are good for balance druids. So, for now, you're just going to have to roll, roll around without any trinkets. Yeah, that's just the nature of vanilla. Barely any trinkets. So you have to get them through dungeons or whatever. Um, so we're going to move on to the rings. And for the rings, I am going to resort to the auction house, which is why we're here again. And um, basically why I'm here is because sometimes there are a few rings that you can buy that are uh, pretty cheap. And um, offer you some intellect and stamina. So uh, we're definitely going to check that out. Um, as you can see, uh, the Maiden Circle and such. Like this one right here. It's uh, 560 gold. So that's obviously way too expensive. We're not going to even bother buying that. Because we don't have the money. But if you look down. Let's see here. I've got a Ring of the Whale for 9 gold 50. And oh, look at this. F five rings. With... Uh, the eagle, which means intellect and stamina for 11 gold. For 11 gold. So, um, rings will always be expensive on the auction house because through questing they are extremely scarce. Which is why 11 gold is... Which is why I consider 11 gold to be a decent deal for uh, one of those rings. So, I'm just going to have to pick that one up right there. Because it's a good deal and it gives us a fair bit of stamina and a fair bit of intellect. So, I'm going to buy that out. 11 gold and there we go. Now... Um, I understand that there's not always these kinds of rings on the auction house, so I am going to show you one ring that you can get through questing, which is the Bloodbone Band. But first I'm going to get uh, the ring that I just bought out of my mill, and then we're going to go to Grumgold Base Camp to do the quest for that other ring. So, there we go, that's ring number one we can check off our gear list. Alright, now, um, the best thing I'd recommend you to do is grab yourself another of those rings if they are available because I just looked and they are not unique so getting two of these would be really awesome however I do understand that if you look look at this video and you check out the auction house it might not be there so I am gonna give you one ring you can, you can obtain through questing and for that we're gonna have to go back to Gromgold base camp I'm gonna have to talk to I think this dude nope Kinwile, this guy right here. And he's going to give us a quest called Bloody Bone Necklaces. And that will give us this. Seven Stamina, Two Spirits. It's by far not as good as the ring I just picked up from the auction house. But if you're looking for a ring just to fill up that other ring slot, and you can't really find anything else, this is a decent choice. It's seven Stamina, Two Spirit. At least makes your character a little bit less squishy, so... It's a decent choice and it's very easy to obtain. All you need to do is kill a bunch of trolls. They're all like level 34 to 38. And um, you only have to collect 25 of these necklaces and they drop. The drop rate's pretty good. So we're going to go over here at these two runes or this rune up here. It just basically, I think pretty much any troll that uh, is here in Stranglethorn Vale will drop these. And um, as I said before, the drop rate is really high, so it's very easy to get. And uh, as a level 60, it's just going to be an absolute breeze. I'm going to show you guys. So these, these are the guys you can uh, farm. They're level 33, actually, so they're really easy to kill. So let me just kill this dude right here, hoping he will drop one of those necklaces. Yep, there we go. So I'm going to keep on farming until we have 25. And then we will have filled our second ring slot. Okay, I got all the bloody bone necklaces. Took me about five minutes, so it was really easy. So, I'm gonna hand it in. And there we go. We got yet another item. We can check off our gear list. 
So all there's left to do now is get um, where is the ring? There we go. To get um, an item for our feet, legs, waist, and gloves, and then we'll be done. So let's move on to the feet. Okay, for the feet, we're gonna have to resort to yet again the auction house because um, there are some abyssal cloth, leather, mail, and plate items on the auction house, and I'm talking about the abyssal. Uh, leather feet and the cloth feet of sorcery because they will give you 11 stamina 12 intellect and 12 spell damage which is pretty damn nice and these are 11 gold 35 now what you can do you can also go for the cloth slippers I mean the only difference is a little bit of uh, you have a little bit less armor but these are six gold so that's even a better deal so you can either pick up the leather ones or the cloth ones so we're gonna go with the cloth ones which will only cost us 6 gold and will give us a bit of stamina, a bit of intellect and a bit of spell damage. So that's a great deal for just 6 gold. So we're going to pick that up. And once we've done that, we have 3 items remaining on our list. So let's head to the mailbox and get that item. There we go. So that's yet another item we can check off our gear list. There we go. Okay, moving on to the legs. Okay, for the pants, we are gonna go for the red mage weave pants. I actually got them right here, already crafted. Um, these are very easy to obtain, as you can see, 12 intellect and 14 spell damage, so more spell damage is always a good thing. And they're very easy to craft. All you need is three bolts of mage weave, which are 15 mage weave cloth, um, two red dye, and one heavy silken thread. And both the red dye and the heavy silken thread can be bought at the tailoring supplies NPC for around 10 silver. So, and pretty much any mage can craft this as well. So it's very easy. And there we go, that, those are the pants. So that's another item we can add to our list. And then let's move on to the belt. Okay, for the belt, um, there was also not really that much choice. Now I could have gone for the room cloth belt that I um, also recommended on my gearing up your clothy video, but I wanted to go for a leather belt, if that at least was possible. Now I looked around at a WoW database, I looked around on the internet, couldn't really find couldn't really find anything, until I looked at my own character and I saw that I was already wearing this, the Excavator's Utility Belt, which has 4 stamina and 16 intellect. And I thought, yeah, that was a pretty good item, where did I get that? And I got it from a quest that this little guy gives us right here which is Spark Nil Miner, and he will give us a quest called Roll the Bones, where you basically have to collect eight dinosaur bones. Um, the drop rate is really high, it's very easy, and I'm just gonna show you real quick where to get this. So, I'm in Ungoro Crater right now, and you can basically get this from any um, Ravasar, or I think they're called Dimitratums. I, <laughs> I have no idea how to pronounce them, but I'll show you the mob anyway. So it's very easy. And the belt itself is pretty damn nice. I mean, 16 intellect and it's leather. That's uh, really nice. So, as you see, one right there. And uh, you can basically kill those. They're level 51. They're very easy to kill. Um, high drop rate, so it only takes you 10 minutes to complete. And, uh, yeah. Just gather 8 of them. And you're all set. So, that's how you get a, a pretty nice but very easy to obtainable belt. So, um, without further ado, let's move on to the very last item, which are the gloves. Alright, time to get the very last item, the gloves, and we're here in Winter Spring. More specifically, we are right now at this little thingy right here, which is the tunnel from uh, Fellwood to Winter Spring. So, I'm going to have to talk to this dude right here, Salfa, and he's going to give us a quest called Winterfall Activity. And he will give us these. Um, Earth water, Earth Warder's gloves, which have 22 spell damage and unfortunately no stats such as uh, spell um, stamina or intellect. But 22 spell damage on the green gloves is pretty damn awesome. Uh, we need to kill six totemic, six den watchers, and six pathfinders, and you can find them right here, this little icon, and right here. And there's plenty of mobs there. They're easy to kill. And that's pretty much it. Just kill some mobs and we're all done. So, let's get killing. 
All right, we kill all the mobs, which means we're done with the very last item on our list, which is the gloves. And there we go. Yep, I got space. So, there we go. That's all the items from our gear list. Now, there's only one thing to do. Well, actually, two things. Is to go to Thunder Bluff, respec, and see how much damage we can do with this gear. All right, we're here in Thunder Bluff at the Elder Rise where the druid trainers are because first we're gonna respec and while we're doing that I might as well show you the PvE balance spec I'm gonna open the talent tree I'm gonna start off by putting 5 points in improved wrath because it's great, it reduces your wrath spell by half a second to cast time and the wrath is really great for uh, quick damage since starfire takes 3 seconds to cast so definitely that, we're gonna mo move on to Moonfire, great talent, 10% um, increased crit critical strike chance and 10% damage. Then we're going to move on to Nature's Reach for some extra range. Natural Shapeshifter to reduce mana shifting, or uh, shape shifting. I'm going to go to Vengeance, which will give us a 100% critical strike damage bonus. So instead of, um, for instance, you hit 500 with Starfire, without this talent it will be 750, and with this talent you will be critting for 1000. So definitely that. I'm gonna do improved Starfire because Starfire is gonna be your main spell. So I'm gonna have to reduce the cast time for half a second. So now it's three seconds. I'm gonna go to Nature's Grace, which means if we crit, the next spell will have 0.5 seconds reduced cast time. And Moon Glow to reduce the spells. Vengeance for another 10% increased damage for Starfire. And then Moonkin. I'm gonna go back to the tree and let me see if I'm doing it right here. I'm gonna go to improve thorns. This is basically to buff the tank because that means um, he'll do more damage against mobs, which means more threat. And I'm gonna go to the restoration tree and then click on improve mark of the wild for more stats than improved healing touch. So should you have to heal you can uh, use Healing Touch because now it's 2.5 seconds instead of 3. And then 50% Mana Regeneration. And that's how you spec balance. Okay, let me just see if everything's in order. Uh-huh. Let's see. Yep. I'm going to just hockey that to... Uh, let's see. Where is it? Our oh, balance, of course. Duh. <laughs> Why not? All right, there we go. Now, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. I've activated bonus scanner, which can scan my uh, spell damage, and we can see how much these stats will give me. So, without further ado, let's equip all the items. And there we go. That's what our druid looks like after this video. So, after the uh, gearing up stage, we have 116 spell damage. So, for a recently dinged level 60 druid with a bunch of greens, that's definitely not bad whatsoever. So, let's go down and uh, do some low level mobs. And uh, get into Moonkin form and see how much we can do with Starfire, real quick. Ah, there we go, 1248, so uh, I just killed a few mobs using Starfire and about uh, the average damage is about 650, so that would translate to about 1300 crits. So that's definitely not bad for a druid with a bunch of greens and a few blues. Um, yeah, I think this is the end of the video, I have nothing else to show you, I just showed you the gear you can get, how to get it, where to get it, um, the PvE balance spec, and that's pretty much it. Um, one thing I have to say though is that crits at this state will be very rare. I mean we don't have any crit gear yet and we don't even have any spell hit gear yet. But I intend to make a part 2 video where I'll be um, showing you how to get ready for raids and then we will tackle crit and spell hit so don't worry. Um, as of now you can use this gear to do dungeons, normal dungeons and you'll do just fine. So. 
As always, I want to thank you all for watching this video. It's become quite a long one. Um, but then again, it was also really fun to make. And I hope I helped some people out. So, thanks for watching. I'm Hamsterville Gaming, and have a good one. All right, we're here in Silithus, which I like to call. Uh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry.